We're Cody and Kelly. We set out to show you the beauty of America while living in a tent. Now we're in a truck camper. Before we get into today's adventure, head over to Facebook and Instagram to follow for extra content and notifications of our latest videos. Also, if you're interested in any of our gear, click the link in the description below titled Shop Our Gear. On today's episode, we take you on an inside look at the struggles we face while finding dispersed camping. However, it's all worth it when we find a perfect spot with a trail to a very unique waterfall. Howdy y'all and welcome to Washington State. This is our first time to ever be in Washington and we're in the Gifford National Forest just south of Mount Rainier National Park and we were going to do this amazing hike up the road here and get an awesome view of Mount Rainier from the National Forest but last night we had some visitors drive by and it made us a little uncomfortable to leave our vehicle uh, at the trailhead parking. Now Many of you know that we had our trailer stolen a long time ago, and that has made us a little cautious when we feel uncomfortable somewhere. So you ask, how do we keep our assets a little bit more protected? If we don't feel safe somewhere, we choose just to leave the area and possibly do more research about the area in the future. So I know that there's other points of access and other beautiful parts of the National Forest surrounding Mount Rainier, but we don't know anything else about this region except for focusing on this one spot and we're, we'll just do some more research in the future find something else out just to keep the show on the road we're going to go ahead and go to another spot that i did five times the research on which is olympic peninsula i want to go up there so bad so today instead of doing the hike that's where we're heading right angel princess yes good morning everyone with all that being said we did not get a lot of sleep last night like cody said we had some questionable visitors pull into our camp spot several times all hours of the night so this morning i'm making blueberry pancakes and if you're ever wondering what i'm doing with the syrup i am heating it up she likes to make sure her syrup is room temperature no warm because she doesn't want to cool off her pancake. But we did need to tell them that we finally did find a primitive camping spot. Oh yeah, we, we've been, uh, we finally did find a primitive and we thought we were going to sleep really nicely. I haven't slept in two nights. <laughs> you never know when you live you, on the road. You never know and these things happen. It could happen to you. It can happen anywhere. And we don't talk about it much because it's it's kind of like a Debbie Downer. So we don't talk about it much but we were like we just gotta be honest with y'all. My motto is if I don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And Kelly does bring up a good point. This has happened a few times throughout the years and y'all need to know about these things. Y'all need to know it's not always perfect. And you find the perfect Rainbows spot. Rainbows and butterflies. Rainbows and butterflies. But you make the best you can out of a situation. You adapt, you overcome, and you head on to the next. Oh, my butter all melted that way. All right, we're out. waiting on one more pancake and then we'll be ready to eat. That is a perfect looking pancake. Is that my pancake? Say. Yes. You can have it since it's perfect. I was fine. My first one was perfect. Good coffee. We are ready to move on. The last things we gotta do, we got the blocks, lock everything, and then we're ready to hit the road. Where exactly are we going? We have no idea, but this is, he knows, but in reality, we have no idea no, when we, really we get don't. there where we're going. But that's just how it is sometimes when you live this way. Actually, it's how it is all the time, pretty much. Unless you have a campground reserve, then you know exactly where you're going. Well, it has been very beautiful out here so far, but every single spot we've passed has been taken. And we've passed about eight so far. And we're actually coming up to the spot that I flagged. I got a feeling it's taken. Yep, it's taken. All right, we'll keep driving for a second, see if we can find something else. So it is getting very, very thick. And we didn't mention today is Saturday and there is also a mountain bike race going on right now. So there's tons of people out here and the road is getting very tight. And we got two, two trucks. 
they opened up for us. This is opening up just there. Hey, look, a waterfall. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. It's tall. Yeah. It's just gotten tighter and bumpier. Looks like you can turn around right here, possibly. Yeah, I might. I might do that. I'm just looking for that wall. I don't know where it is. That's what I was looking for. I don't see it. You don't see that one? Mm -mm, I don't know where it is. It's back there. Do a little Austin Powers work here. Almost got it. Ooh. Okay. All right, we're just gonna keep driving till we find something. Everything was taken by the waterway. Ooh, my butt stoved up. But we found this cool little entrance. It's like something off of Jurassic Park. But I'm gonna walk back here and see if there's anybody back here. And if I can turn around, cause I don't wanna drive down here and it'd be a tight fit. If I haven't told you, we have made it to the Olympic National Forest. That is where we're located right now. There's nobody back there, but it's just a road and there's a firing in the middle of it. We can go a little bit more since I saw the road forks off here in a second and see what it looks like. So that road didn't work out either. So we decided to come back to this pretty much dead end trail and Cody's gonna back it in. I'm gonna watch to make sure we don't hit anything. Well, we made it back here, woohoo! So yeah, I'm thinking this trail is no longer in use anymore. And uh, there is an established fire pit. So we just gotta get it level and I'm sure I found something. I knew we would find something, but you just never know. We didn't go through anything too bad, but he's just gonna check the top to see. Is it yeah, good? Elite. Elite, okay. We're all good? But it is very quiet back here. Didn't experience any mosquitoes as I was standing here. Speaking of mosquitoes, a lot of you have been asking for the recipe for the mosquito spray. I'm going to be putting together a video that we will post on our Facebook channel. Just a short three to five minute video of the ingredients I use, what essential oils, and what it all goes into. So I'm going to put that on our Facebook page here pretty soon. So be on the lookout for that. Cody's already left me to go exploring. See where this road goes. Where does it go? Okay, so it is a dead end. It feels really good out here too. I'm telling you, this is a really awesome place. And that water was gorgeous. So hopefully, what I'm thinking is, is if everybody leaves, today's Saturday, if they leave tomorrow, maybe we can get a spot by the water. That'd be awesome. awesome. Well, since we were telling y'all how beautiful that water was, we thought we would just go take a gander at it. So last night, whenever we went down to the water, we just came back up and we just wanted to relax and 
that's basically what we did. Ate something, went to bed, and it was so nice. If oh, you, if you've noticed, we've been like go 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 go. Right. We've pretty much been filming every day, if not every other day. And now we're just happy that we found somewhere we can relax. You know, we don't have to leave today, and it's just pretty great. Well, after another 15, 20 minute nap, we feel great. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I feel amazing right now. That is exactly what I needed, but we did learn something just a minute ago. We don't need to move camp and try to find camp along the creek. Wait, let me rephrase it. It's a river anywhere because people are driving by right now looking for camp. So we thought, let's just go on a hike. And there's a waterfall called Maiden Hair Falls. Maiden Hair Falls. <laughs> and I I'll let you- I we have the same color shirt on. No, we don't. Mine's more. Mine, yours is pink. Mine's solid. Yours is. I don't know. Solid. Solid. Yours is like that. The solid. Red, pink. <sighs> the river's name is also the same name of a lake that's over here. And what's it called, honey? I think it's Winnahoochee. It gets hotter than a Winnahoochee. Do 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 do. But what's funny is I didn't realize how close we were to these falls because the falls are actually something I flagged over in this area when I was doing research and I got real excited to come over here. I need to start listening to my gut. And my gut feeling told me to come to this part of the Olympic National Forest, see the Olympic Peninsula. And at the last minute, I told Kelly, let's go over here south of uh, Mount Rainier. And I didn't feel that 100% good about it. I should have just came here. I need to start listening to my gut. People have been telling you to listen to your gut for years. Still looks like there's people camping down there, so I think we made a good call. Uh, it might not be. No, that's it. We're on it. Okay. This is one of the things I've always wanted to see whenever I came to the Pacific Northwest is this. This view here. All this green vegetation. Mm, the ferns. A tree the growing on top of a tree that's down and dead. Look at that. And that was a huge tree too. We have some of these by our camp. We were noticing this morning that they're not tall anymore, but you could tell like just the trunk is so big. I mean, that's not little, that's at least, mm -hmm. you know, a 30 year old tree or 25 year old tree growing on top of that thing. Can you imagine how loud this tree was when it fell? Look at this tree. Dang. It's dead, but. Look how big little. around it is. Holy cow. Now, if that fell, that would be loud. Yeah. Wow. It's even got a mushroom going on right there. Speaking of mushrooms, the other day we were at a co op somewhere, grocery store, and they had lion's mane mushrooms. So I bought some, tested it out, and I fried them, pan fried them. Oh, they were so good. <laughs> they were pretty darn good. Man, I love it here.
It's so beautiful up there, I am just itching to actually touch the water. So I found this little trail right up here. That was one of the coolest waterfalls I've ever seen because of that big tree basically being part of the waterfall. It's crazy. Well, we came back down to the main road. You can drive this and there's people camping over there to see if we can actually get to the water from the waterfall and the Win Winoochee River. And it looks like we see some water. I guess you can camp here too. Yeah. It's probably hot. It's pretty toasty. I can feel it. Yeah. It's cold, but it feels good. Yeah, I put my hands on it earlier. Oh, that, is cold. that is a deep hole. Wow, I'm good though. Pretty. It's beautiful, but it's hurting my calves. It stings. It's so cold. Okay, it's slippery. Okay. Yeah. There is camping spots all over the place over here. With how crowded it is, I'm kind of glad we're where we're at. Yeah, because where we're at, it feels like we're the only people. <laughs> Out here? Yeah. Oh, this is a nice little shaded spot. Yeah. Hmm. It's just a labyrinth of tent campers everywhere. They're all over the place. Every time you walk, you think you're going to walk somewhere in an opening and you end up in someone's campground. I guess the, there's no way to get down there unless you infringe on someone's camp spot. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Now that we're back at camp, I think I'm really digging our little area. I like our camp spot. Very peaceful. So back in early May, late April, we went down to Pensacola and did some pompano fishing. If y'all remember that, one of the most amazing days of my life. And we kept two of the pompano and we froze them. Well, now we're in Washington, the complete furthest state in the lower 48 from Florida. And we decided, hey, we're going to finally eat those pompano. Thawing out right now in the water. I just can't believe we waited this long to eat this pompano. I think we were a little nervous to cook it. Well, there was two different ways I was gonna cook it. I was either gonna salt bake it, or I was gonna cook it this way with lemon, garlic, salt, pepper, oil. And to salt bake it, I think when I was looking that up, you had to bake it for multiple hours at a very low temperature, and you kind of encrust the whole thing with salt. I just didn't really want to do that. Maybe if we had a house, that would be a different story, but here that's a, like propane that we'd be using consistently for those hours. So we just decided to bake it this way, which it's going to be still going to be good because the fish is delicious regardless. Maybe one day I'll be able to try the salt bake, but we're going to do it this way. I smell the Florida Gulf right now. Yeah. Right when she opened that bag up. Just gonna cut the fish like this. So we're gonna take the oil and we're just gonna pour a little bit on each side and I'm gonna rub the whole fish with oil. So we've got some lemon and some garlic and what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff the cavity of the fish, the garlic and the lemon. Now we're going to season the outside of the fish. We're going to do pepper, salt. Now we also went ahead and stuffed it with thyme and rosemary. Let's get the oven going. The oven needs to be at 450 because we're only going to bake this for probably 20 minutes, if that. We're going to go ahead and throw this fish in the oven. And I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for 20 minutes because I don't think it's at 450 yet. So we're just gonna say 20 and then we'll check it. To pair with this fish, we're gonna make couscous. Now this is a couscous that is in my cookbook. I just kind of thought about this on a whim, so I didn't really prepare for it. So I do not have apricots. Normally it has apricots, cranberries, and green onion, and then feta cheese, but we do not have the apricots. So we're gonna skip that and we're gonna prepare it anyway. So I'm just gonna prepare the couscous as package directions 
say. Technical difficulties. The camera did something weird. So we didn't get what Kelly did, but she did get the couscous in the pot. Yeah, so couscous is fairly easy to fix if you just follow package directions. And then you can add whatever you want to add to it. Um, but yeah, just boil the water, added salt, oil, dump the couscous in there, turn the burner off, stir it up, and cover it. So you just cover it and you let it sit until all the moisture is soaked into the couscous and then you take your fork and just fluff it. Couscous is good. Anytime I prepare this, I always like to pair it with a fish. I don't know why. I used to do it a lot when I would make trout. So it's really good with fish, um, but it's good fluffed up. We're gonna add in green onion and cranberries. And then we've got some feta cheese. And then of course we're gonna do more salt and pepper. Off camera, we were talking if this is not good, the fish. We'll have a uh, peanut butter and crackers. Oh, I think it's fine. I don't think the fish is bad. I just never know. Like, just like when I prepared it the first time, like, I just, I don't know. The first time Kelly prepared that stuff, it was so epic. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen when we caught the fish and Kelly cooked it the same day and we hung out with some really cool people, we'll make sure to put it in the description below. It really was one of the greatest days of my life. It was a lot of fun. I agree. We're hungry. <laughs> it's an appetizer for dinner. Mm -hmm. Probably got 10 minutes left on the fish. All right, fish is done. Put some more lemon juice on it. All right. We decided that we're just gonna eat it on one uh, pan thing because I have a feeling this is gonna be messy. Yeah. There's the finished couscous. Kelly, that's still a really good fish. Mm -hmm. I decimated it. I loved it. But Kelly didn't care for it as much as the fillets. Yeah, I just like my fillets better. I don't know what it is, but I just like the fillets better. But we're going to be exploring some more of the Olympic Peninsula, and we'll catch you on the other. See you next time. <laughs>